Last time we used this setup, we got a surprise coming. You'll find out soon. Alright, we're finally back with some mountain bike content. I want to start this out talking about the new bike I'm putting together, but then we're really going to get into talking about the Morocco, Morocco M4 four-piston brakes that I've used before on my Polygon and that I'm also getting for this bike. But just go over this bike real quick. So I got this frame from AliExpress. I wound up in the end probably only paying about $150 for it. I don't have a lot of the, a lot of the uh, information on it yet because when you buy them cheap frames from them, it's hard to get information from them. But it's somewhere around 100 to 120 millimeters of rear travel. If you look back here, I got my uh, GX SRAM GX 11 speed derailleur I'm going to be using. I got a 9 to 46 cassette. My Coos, my Cooser hub. And come around up here, you can see my uh, Suntour Radiant Fork, 34 millimeter stanchions. I think it's 130 millimeter travel, but I'm going to adjust it to 140. I can I can change the adjustment. And I have a Cooser 390 hub up front because it's a boost. It's got boost spacing and a through axle. And my uh, lightweight steering neck. All right, let me tell you what wheels and tires I'm going to be running. So I have front and rear Sunringle Helix Helix rims, 30 millimeter wide, 32 spoke. Okay, they're uh, I have 29 and 27.5, so it's going to be a mullet. I'm going to be running. I've been really liking Vittoria tires lately. 2.4, 27.5 by 2.4 Goma. This is, this is the rear. This is the rear tire, the Goma. And then I have a Morsa, a 29 by 2.35 Morsa for the front. Pretty aggressive tires. I don't know. The area we ride in, New Jersey dirt, likes aggressive rubber. I've tried, I've tried, uh, more cross country friendly treads and they just gum up with, with dirt. So the dirt in New Jersey is just pretty gummy, I guess. I don't know. But that seems to be what works. So here's the thing I really wanted to talk about today. I really wanted to do something to talk about these four piston calipers. Because they're really kind of a good deal and I've been using them on my Polygon and I'm real happy with them. But there is a few little things that I want to discuss about them. So. We're going to go over here for a minute. I got a new package here we're going to open. All right, so I got this package here, and I'm pretty sure it's the brakes. I haven't opened it at all, but I ordered it on March 7th, and I received it on March 19th. That's about 12 days. I mean, you can't count on that from AliExpress. A lot of times stuff comes up to a month, I figure. I paid $49.76 for it. When I ordered them, I'm gonna order them. I hope I don't cut nothing. It's kind of risky doing this. You might get, you might get a surprise, right? Okay, so we have mounting bolts. Now here's the thing you need to know. I use right hand front brake because I've been riding motorcycles way too long to switch to left hand front. Tracy's the only one that still uses uh, left-hand front. I don't know why. She won't let me switch it. Trail 4.0. I guess they're a little bit different now. I don't think my other ones say that. Oh, it's a different... It says a different brand for the Master Cylinder. Hasus, H-A-S-S-U-S. -S -S huh. Still says uh, E4. Ooh, this is a little bit different. This might be good, though. See, I get I didn't even open up the... <laughs> I didn't even open it up to see, but... 
One thing about these Maroka calipers, the ones I'll show you on my bike, you can't use the pads with the cooling fins because the pads have to come out from the bottom. But I have a feeling this version might come out the top. And that would mean you could use the cooling fin style. Look at that. I bet you could use a cooling fin style pad in that. I was all ready to say you can't use a cooling fin pad. But they came out the top, so I think you probably could. Now, these pads are plain old resin pads. This is what comes with pretty much every caliper, every stock bike. They're very universal. They, they grip pretty good. They'll grip when it's wet but they don't take heat well. So it's a good pad to start with, but they don't take heat well. That's, that's the main problem. Look at the, the shape of this lever. I just, I like the way these levers are, that they're not just straight levers. It's got a little dog leg in there. It's way more comfortable to ride with. I think most brakes have these little screws. It just basically, you could adjust how far off the handlebar the lever is. Now that we're talking about brakes, though, brake pads, I do want to show you something. Okay, so you saw the resin ones on the other one. Here's some resin ones also. These are the ones I destroyed on my bike. So, I probably ran these, I don't know. They're glazed over. It's You might even be able to see on that one. See a little there. I had these maybe, I don't know, three, four rides, and I glazed them over to where they weren't usable. What I've, I have on the bike now is these are ceramic pads. Now, you can't really, they, they all kind of look the same. If they weren't color-coded, you wouldn't know the difference, right? But these are ceramic pads, and they're based on a, a ceramic material binding everything together instead of resin. Now also have, you also have these pads. These are semi-metallic. Oh, well, I didn't even talk about ceramic. Ceramic is good all around. Like, they're not hard on the rotors, and they'll still work if they get wet, and they'll still take a lot of heat. But they're not your top-end racing pads, right? So now you have, these are semi these are semi-metallics. You might be able to see in the pack, there's a lot more metal in the actual, you can probably see the grains of metal in there. You can see these resin ones have you some, it up a little more? have some grains, but you can see a lot more grains in that one of metal. So these are semi-metallic. These are supposed to be a stopgap type thing between you know, hardcore and resin, okay, between full metallic and resin. So these will still work pretty good in the rain. They'll still, won't take that long to heat up. You don't have to put a lot of heat in them. They won't be terrible on the rotors. They're harder on a rotor than a resin or a ceramic. But they still have good, they're kind of in the middle, right? Then we're going to get to, these are sintered metal pads, okay? Now, these have a lot of metal in them. They have a lot of copper in them. Some of the cheaper pads have steel fibers. These have copper fibers in them. These, the problem with fully, with sintered metal pads is it takes a lot of heat to get them working good. And then once they're working good, they'll stay consistent. Like, if you get a lot of heat in the pad and you ride the thing hard the whole day, it'll stay consistent. The downfall is... They're hard on rotors. You know, they'll eat up a rotor. And they really, when I bought these, they said steel rotors only. So I have a, I have a stainless steel rotor I'm, I'm going to use when I use these. So I'm going to play around with different pads and see how they work. One thing I want to tell you with, the, with these, well, this one here, this is a brand I never even heard of. So it's, it's ha, ha, has, Hassus, maybe? I don't know. 
But they look just like the uh, Marokas. They look just like the Marokas. They look pretty nice. I mean, looks like it actually has a bleed port on it, which is kind of nice down low. But they all use this. If you look at this pad, this pad, if you buy a pad that's made for a Shimano Saint uh, M8, A10 or Shimano Saint Z, ZEE, -E, they'll, they'll fit these calipers. So they'll fit the Marokas, they'll fit these, whatever that brand is right now. So you got a lot of options because, you know, they fit sh it's the same pad as a Shimano. All right, so if you look at the Maroka M4, look how short that is. You can't take the pads out of the top. So you can't use a cooling fin type pad. But look at the opening on the top of this one. So you can, I think you can use a cooling pad type, a cooling fin type pad. And I am going to have to try one. I I had no idea I was getting anything other than a Maroka. When I ordered it, it was a Maroka. <laughs> But I'm not that I'm not upset because it looks like this might be a little bit better, a little bit better uh, caliper. All right, now there was one thing that I ran across with my Maroka calipers, and I was watching a video that MTB Alex made about these calipers, and somebody commented in his video about how they had a leak from the bleed port on the lever. Okay, so. I, I replied to the guy and, and asked him, well, what did you do? Where did you get a replacement O-ring? And he told me, I, let me see, I wrote it down here. He ordered a, a O-ring for a Shimano MT400, and that was the same O-ring. Oh, and his name was Juan Ponce. Hopefully I didn't mess your name up. So I wanted, I wanted to thank him for letting me know that information. I bought a couple of those O-rings. Let's see if it's going to fix it. All right, so if you look down here on the lever... You can see the oil leaking out. And I hang my bikes upside down, and I always got to pump the lever. It's probably even low. Oh, it's pumped up. It, it drops because the oil pressure loosens up. So I'm going to loosen this up so I can get it straight here. And here's another thing I didn't check before, so hopefully it's the right O-ring. Get a little T15. This is the first time I'm checking myself, so... Hopefully. Okay. So that O ring does look a little bigger. Here, look, you can see on here, you can see how much smaller the new one is. I mean, that's what I was told. The O-ring was the wrong size on them. I got these O-rings from uh, Epic Bleed Solutions in the UK. But I'm sure you could source some other places. So we shall have to see after a ride if this actually works. We'll find out, I guess. You've seen in the beginning of the video, the little thing with our bikes on the uh, cobbled together hitch that I made, right? That's going to be changing. That thing that did its job. I got only $100 in the whole thing, but it's really a pain to load up. So we got a change coming there. And we're going to have that. We're going to do a video for that. We're going to put a new derailleur on our our original, our OG mullet. And, uh, yeah, we got some projects coming up. You'll see, you'll see them in the next few weeks. All right, see you next time.